Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the WizMaker L1, a benchtop diode laser with an incredible 36 watt laser. These diode lasers are quickly approaching the power of CO2 lasers, but does that power sacrifice quality? Let's find out. Before we begin, this L1 laser engraver was provided for me to review by WizMaker. They aren't paying me for this review, and they won't see this video before I release it. Everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser for the last month. Let's get into it. The WizMaker L1 is a benchtop diode laser engraver with a work area of 400mm by 400mm. The laser module comes in three different varieties, a 12 watt version, a 24 watt version, and a 36 watt version. I have the 36 watt version with me today. Inside the laser module are six 6 watt blue diode lasers that are combined together to form the 36 watt output. On top of the laser is a powerful cooling fan that blows through the unit, both cooling the diodes and helping push the smoke away. The fan is not too loud, and it's comfortable to be around the machine while running without requiring hearing protection. At the bottom is a window that does a good job blocking reflective laser light, and the other three sides are completely blocked off. Also built into the laser module is the air assist nozzle, so you can attach an air assist compressor very easily. With the power of the laser, I highly recommend using air assist to get the most out of the machine. While WizMaker sells both their own air assist compressor and honeycomb work surface, I do not have samples, so I'll be using my own set that I already had on hand. The laser module is held into the x-axis with a single knob that makes it easy to adjust. Focus adjustment is done using the provided focusing spacer. Simply place the focus spacer onto your material, loosen the knob, slide the laser module down onto the spacer, and tighten the knob. It works well enough, but I do wish the focusing spacer was built into the machine. It's something that you'll need to keep track of. And if you lose it, you'll have to find another 4mm replacement. The WizMaker L1 has an aluminum frame with nice rounded corners. The frame is very sturdy, and I like the appearance of it. The X and Y axes are belt driven, and there are end stop switches on one end of each axis to allow for homing. At the front of the machine is the control box. It has power inputs, USB input, a micro SD card slot, power switch, and an emergency stop latch. It's always good to see an emergency stop latch that immediately cuts all power to the machine when touched. On the side of the machine is an HDMI port for an external touchscreen display. One is not included with the engraver, but if you purchase one from another vendor, then it can be used to control the laser. It would also allow you to start cuts saved to the SD card, so you do not have to be tethered to a computer. Also included is a pair of blue light blocking goggles, a few pieces of sample materials, a USB reader with a 4GB micro SD card, and wrenches needed for assembly. Everything you need to get quickly up and running. The WizMaker L1 comes mostly pre-assembled, with all of the belts in place and wires nicely wrapped. The included full-color instruction manual made the process extremely easy. Assembly is just bolting together the four frame pieces, attaching the x-axis, screwing in the feet, sliding in the laser module, and plugging in the wires. It took less than 30 minutes to assemble, and I think anyone would be able to put it together. The WizMaker L1 can be controlled using any Gerbil control software, such as Laser Gerbil or Lightburn. Laser Gerbil is free, but I am a big fan of Lightburn, so that is what I use for all my tests. WizMaker provides a Lightburn config file for the L1 on the included microSD card. So enough of the specs, how well does the WizMaker L1 actually cut and engrave? The short answer is, very fast. The 36 watt laser makes short work of cutting through materials, especially if you use an air assist compressor. The WizMaker L1 was cutting through an eighth of an inch birch plywood consistently at 600 millimeters per minute or 10 millimeters per second. You know we've entered a new age of diode laser engravers when we can talk about cutting in millimeters per second. My kerf test showed a kerf offset of 0.09 millimeters. That is a slightly larger of a kerf than other lower powered lasers that I've tested, but that is the trade-off between combining so many lasers together. That larger kerf doesn't seem to affect engraving quality, however. My test images look great, especially when used with Lightburn's dot width correction. There is a lot of mass in the 36 watt laser module, which seemed to limit its max engraving speed to about 8,000 millimeters per minute. I was able to cut through a quarter of an inch and even one half inch basswood with decent speeds, thanks to the powerful laser. Careful with thicker materials though, as I did have some smoldering at too slow of a speed. Moving on to acrylics, diode lasers cannot cut clear acrylics, but the WizMaker L1 cuts and engraves opaque acrylics just fine. My test keychains all turned out great, with very consistent engravings. I performed my leather tests with slightly too much power, and over engraved it. This is one of the drawbacks of a powerful laser. It is very easy to underestimate the difference between, say, 
30% power and 40% power. But I think with less power, leather would engrave very nicely. My other tests on materials such as slates showed the same pattern. Very consistent engravings and could tackle all the normal materials. One of my favorite though was stainless steel. By changing the power and line intervals, you can get some very pretty colored oxides on stainless steel. Very beautiful shades of blues, oranges, browns, and blacks. That could really enhance the creative possibilities for stainless steel jewelry. Wizmaker's website advertises one pass cutting of 0.1mm metals with the 36 watt version. The thinnest metal that I had was this 0.18mm aluminum business cards, but with my testing I could not get the Wizmaker L1 to cut through. It might be able to cut other metals, but I wasn't able to verify that. My only negative comments is that the Wizmaker L1 lacks some safety features that are present in many other laser engravers. There is no tilt or bump detection, so the laser will continue running even if the machine is bumped off the table. There is also no flame detection, and it only has end stops in the minimum direction, so it will happily run into the frame if commanded to. While I personally don't think these are deal breakers, it could be for some customers. So in conclusion, the Wizmaker L1 is a very capable laser engraver. I like the look of the engraver frame with its curved edges and feet. With the options of a 12 watt, 24 watt, or 36 watt laser module, you have the choice to fit your needs and budget. The 36 watt diode is incredible, cutting through materials with a speed starting to approach some of the CO2 lasers that I've worked with. Thanks to the manuals, the assembly was very simple, connecting it to the software was easy, and all of my tests were performed without even a single problem that wasn't my own doing, like setting the power slightly too high. You will want proper ventilation around this machine, as it can produce an incredible amount of smoke when running at full power. Accessories such as the air assist compressor, honeycomb work table, and even rotary attachments would further extend the L1's already impressive capabilities. The Wizmaker L1 12 watt version sells for $499 US dollars, with the 24 watt costing $849 and the 36 watt costing $1,199 US dollars. That is very comparable to other lasers in these categories. From my experience with a 36 watt version, if you are looking for one of the most powerful diode lasers on the market, then the Wizmaker 36 watt could be just what you are looking for. So thank you all for watching my review of the Wizmaker L1 laser engraver. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them down in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.